Good morning. I want to, to welcome you and to welcome Frida. We're so happy, Frida, to have you back with us. And Frida was uh, away from us for a while with busyness and health issues. And, and now it's just wonderful to have her back. Um, before I uh, say more about Frida and about our uh, reflection today, I want to, um, uh, if you haven't seen uh, Christine's flyer, uh, we have replaced the old flyer that had embedded in it, you probably didn't even know that, blown up COVID viruses because that was what gave birth to our group. And we've replaced that, the, the COVID flyer, <clears throat> with a beautiful heart for February. And um, next week, we are meeting on Valentine's Day. Uh, is Valentine's Day actually celebrated in other parts of the world or just the United States? Here in Argentina, it is celebrated too. Yes. 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 Is, it, is it in China, Vivian? I don't know about China, but in Japan, it's commercialized in chocolate factories. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. Good. Good. Well, <clears throat> many people think that it's a very silly holiday, but <laughs> I, I think it's a wonderful idea, even if it's so commercialized, to celebrate love. And what we're going to do for next week is um, bring um, quotes or songs or um, uh, thoughts, reflections, pictures about what we, what we think love really is. And we're going to focus on love together. So this will be uh, all of us together as a community will be doing the, the reflection. Melinda and I will host it, but, uh, but all of you are the, the, the um, presenters next time. And if you would, please send us your quote or poem or picture um, or, or movie title um, ahead of time uh, so that we can um, kind of see the beginning. I mean, you can bring things spontaneously, but it would be wonderful if we um, could send out to people um, ahead of time what you are bringing. So not that we'll mail it out to you, but we'll have it and then we will eventually give it to you. Okay, so that's, that's for next week. And um, for this week, um, Frida, who is a focusing oriented expressive arts therapist and that there, and Frida was telling me there's a special certification for that, which is very exciting. And I didn't know that. Um, and Frida is also a coordinator for the Institute and has taught for, for over 20 years. And um, she, the, what, what we know about Frida is she has just such a beautiful sensibility and wonderful way of being in community and making community and bringing expressive um, art sensibility to that. So I'm, I'm very pleased to be listening to you this morning, Frida. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. That is such a warm welcome. And I won't give back that warmth that I got from uh, Lynn and Melinda. I want to give it back to you in this that we can connect here and that you have fun. That's something I'm really... Um, looking forward to having some kind of fun plus learning something new with some sort of maybe empathic curiosity for yourself and to discover uh, things that have to do with the arts or let me say have to do with imagination and with movement with the body so the title for um, today's meeting is um, Embodied Aesthetics 
for well-being. Aesthetics is a very um, theoretical word, um, and I consciously choose it. And um, maybe through the next one and a half hours we share here, maybe you get an idea why. <laughs> um, I want to say something about um, my own focusing training, which started in 1995 with the German and Swiss Focusing Network, because one of my trainers, and we had in our basic training a special arrangement, um, having 10 trainers and five tutors. So a lot of people were involved in our trainings. And one of the trainers, a Swiss one, she started one training with art postcards. And that was uh, something new for me. And I found that um, art, and that is a part of my personal story too, art can be a container a holding interrelational inter container for client and therapist. It already has some sort of um, symbolization. And I see here just in the chat that people ask for the handout. So um, let me just think about this, continue my sentence, and then I have an idea on that handout, okay? okay there is the... Um... Christine attached the handout in chat. Well, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Ah, wonderful. Thank you, Christine. So those who have not got it um, yesterday can download it here. That's wonderful. Okay. So art, a picture, can be a container, a holding container. And one of my personal stories was when I was in my 20s living in Berlin, I made a Jungian psychoanalytic therapy. And there was one picture hanging in this um, therapy room, which was holding me through the process of change in, in my own identity. And I kept that picture later on for 25 years in my own practice. And you have it in the chat. It's a self-portrait, a late self-portrait of Paul Klee. And I will show it in the, in the chat and share my screen. And it has um, something like, you know, parts of it that are falling apart. And at the same time, you can look at it that something is on the way to integrate. So deconstructing and constructing anew was a process over, over this time that, that I could experience. And um, this experience has something in, in, in this uh, picture, you see this um, horizontal, almost horizontal eight. This experience has two sides and you can look at it at two sides. So during a period of six years, I looked at this picture three or two times a week. And it was a kind of promise that going deeper and deeper and deeper and deconstructing my ideas uh, about myself and the world, that there is a coming back into synthesizing, into, into coming together as a whole again. And this picture was like a promise, it is possible. It is possible to come together as a whole um, and come out of it and see the world uh, with an inner coherence. So what I want to say is, and I think I stopped the share to see your faces again. Okay. I want to share that just by choosing a picture in your practice very carefully, you're bringing arts into psychotherapy or counseling. 
it has a meaning and um it can it can have something for the client like a perspective on well-being a perspective a future perspective on how like a good ending of a story yeah um, I just want to have a pause here for one minute, maybe. And invite you to just listen to your own thoughts inside from what you heard from my personal stories on arts and arts as a promise to towards well-being. To listen inside how this echoes to you. And maybe if you let the words have an echo from, yeah, like maybe bodily, a bodily echo of felt sensing, maybe you get some images too of your story with arts or with therapy as a client or as a professional. And the perspective towards well-being, this processing towards well-being. So that you just get a connection from inside. How is the topic that Frida is talking about? How is that in my life? Maybe different, maybe a bit similar. How is it for me, what I heard? And just notice and be friendly with what's showing up. And if you like, you can make reaching out to the chat and type something in like an image coming or memory or feeling or a thought or word all that is welcome there comes promise possibility of a moving forward Soaring with the wind in the sky. Yeah, feel free to add something of your inside response to what you heard even later, right? I see some of you have eyes closed. Yeah. And some new words occur in the chat. Visible, invisible. A stoppage embedded it in a closer or a cleaser. And there comes she walks with horses. Yeah, thank you. Hmm. When you feel ready to step from your inside world and your inside echoes, pictures, words, into making a next step of listening, if you feel ready for that, I just ask for a sign so we are all on board. And uh, I see just comes something new in the chat saying falling into the blue of the medicine bubble. Wonderful. Falling into the blue of the medicine Buddha, I'm sorry. Falling into the blue of the medicine Buddha. And it comes art, articulation, focusing handle, mantra, aspiration. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you take a fresh breath, and if you are ready, maybe you make a move like something like this, so we can see that we all are going back into the outside world and connect. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> welcome, welcome. 
<laughs> yeah. And I want to say something now about well-being because there are many theories about well-being and I refer to an experiential theory and practice of well-being, the existential well-being counseling approach, existential well-being counseling approach of Mia Lyson, a European, a Belgian professor and certifying coordinator really of an old generation, like one of the early pioneers in Europe. And in the handout, there's a little bit more about her and the essence of existential well-being. And I just want to refer to one, I think, important thing. And that is, when we speak of existence, or existential well-being, we don't just ask for um, how are you or how is me? We ask kind of who is you? Who is me? That makes a difference. Right? And who is me, who is you uh, on the existential layers is in four realms of life to be found. And those four realms are interconnected, interplaying. And the realms or areas or dimensions of existence are physical, it's our body, the material thing, the material nature. And then there is a social dimension that is our we here together, for instance, is a social dimension of existence. And then we have the personal dimension that is you with your own personal world is your relation, interrelation to yourself, and of course, the spiritual world. And the spiritual world has something to do with the arts, as the arts allow us to come into contact with some beauty that is bigger, that is larger, that is given, that is part of creation that can enliven us, even if we feel uh, stuck or very tight. So the arts, maybe just one picture, um, can evoke something in a person coming into another state of being or transform or be transcendent. And clients who come to counseling or therapy, they come with real problems of the real world, relational problems, problems with themselves, with material things like being jobless or being ill, etc. And we can work with that. And we also can start working with a spiritual dimension. That is something that Mia Lyson um, is really teaching. And she's, te she's teaching this all in a focusing context. And in the handout, you find a link for the next teaching of hers and her university um, research group, um, which is starting just now in February, going till September, and it's free. And it's a very good um, tool for counselors. I did this training with her online training, and I got a lot from that. And I got this idea from her that really is inspiring that when a client comes telling about concrete problems in life. You can mirror that by art. And you don't have to be an art therapist. You can offer, let's say, a set of professional art pieces that show existential scenes and invite a client to resonate to that in a focusing way. 
and from that make a next step. And how to resonate with are presented to a client that is like a mirror of existential situations, a little bit of that, I hope I can bring into your experiencing today. I want to make a pause again and see if you are with me. Um, my muters can give it a sign or something so I can see that we are um, connected on the intellectual um, topic right now. If you if you can follow that from, from logic. Is that so? Yeah, I see some thumb ups and hands. That's wonderful. It gives me a good feeling. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and I want to make um, um, a line back to my to one of my first focusing teachers who brought those art postcards into our training. Right? She went through all museums of Zurich to get forty cards of different professional art pictures. Yes, and I give the name of um, Mia Lysen. That was just somebody asking. Okay. And uh, my focusing trainer who started uh, for me with those art postcards, this is a Swiss Coordinator Christiane Geiser. So she went through through Zurich collecting our postcards and then asking us as trainees uh, in relation to our personal themes, right? Um, when you think of your theme, of your topic you are focusing on, what images come, what words come, what colors come, what inner forms or shapes occur. And then she offered those postcards of art and asking, choosing one from the felt sense like having this pendulation inside out. I have my inner resonance and I pendulate with the outside art. And then to check what is similar from the inside and the outside, how does that correspond? What is similar and what is different? And the different part has two questions. What is missing on the art piece that was in your inside imagination, your inside felt sense? And what on the art uh, picture is there extra as a plus, as a more that you had not inside in your own imagination? So this is a very practical way of connecting art and the inside world of trainees or clients. Having focusing oriented questions all along the felt sense. And this pendulation between implicit and explicit, the inside and the symbolization, the inside felt sense and the symbolization. And I make another stop here to see if that is something logical for you, if you can follow that, if you can imagine that, right? You can? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. And um, coming from focusing the arts and also from whole body focusing, which I learned with a German trainer and coordinator. I find it important to let the art come under our skin. 
and to not just only use our eyes, but also our sense of, um, yeah, uh, I don't know the English word, co contacting with our skin, to, to lay our hands on the art. Touch, um, touch, touch. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Charles. To have a touch on the art. Because, you know, you can make art with your hands and colors. And if you're not um, so familiar with doing art with brush or hands or colors or so, you just can simply use your hands and follow the, the shapes and um, the forms of the professional art piece. That is there for you already. You do not have to create art out of nothing, right? So our part here of you experiencing something about that and experimenting about that is about receptive art therapy. You take in the arts with the eyes and with touching. And it can be more and more and more. And we just have to um, focus here on what is possible with the techniques, right? So if you are ready to go into some kind of experiential experimenting, I think we are there now. We are right now at the point or at the spot of starting with that. Is that okay for you? Or are there any questions or comments that are necessary for you to speak out or write in the chat before we start this? Just feel free if there's anything you want to mention, say or write in chat before we come to the experiential part. Did you want us to, did you want to set up a um, way for us to engage each other during the breakout room? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first we do the, an exercise I have prepared and after that we have breakout rooms and I think the breakout rooms will be in about 20 minutes or so. Oh, I thought we were, okay. I thought yeah. we were trying to do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Breakout rooms for to share your experiencing and the experiencing we try to make it together parallel. Every one of you can make her or his own experiencing um, experiment and then share about that. Okay. Yeah. So it looks that you are ready to go into experiencing, right? Fine. So to make it technical possible, um, I think we start with one of the paintings I had in the handout and I put it on the screen. And um, who has maybe only um, a smartphone, a small one, maybe you want to download the handout. I, I don't know how you, how you can manage when it's smaller, right? Just try what is possible for you. Okay, I share that screen now. And I have to scroll down. So here we go. You can see this picture and it's from the Norwegian artist Monk. And it's called melancholy. Melancholy. So I just have it here, and um, that you have just a first. Well, it's not what I want. So a first view on it, so you know if you are downloading the handout on your smartphone or whatsoever smaller screen, you know what picture we are on. Okay, so allow yourself to take a fresh seat. Maybe you want to stretch a little bit or move your body a little bit. 
I'll take a few breaths. Just to inhale, let fresh air in and air out. I mean, you've given yourself a fresh seat on your chair. You may close your eyes or just give your eyes a place to rest with eyes open and feet on the ground. And I invite you to just be friendly with your breathing as it comes and goes. Just notice how it is breathing you. And as it is breathing you, just let feel yourself the groundedness of where you're sitting on, your chair or your sofa or whatever you're sitting on. And also allow yourself to feel the ground under your feet, where your feet meet the floor. Let yourself feel the groundedness of your whole body. And also, let you feel the skies above, the space of the heavens, and the spirit of life. And then turn your awareness to the inside, to your breathing again. And if you like, you can imagine having a, a torchlight shining inside. Shining inside to those places in your body that feel comfortable to be with, comfortable enough to be with. Place inside, comfortable enough to be with and settle down inside. And from this inside place, I ask you to invite your body to show you a place inside that is open enough, curious to explore something new. You can ask your body directly to show your place inside that is open enough to be curious for something new. Mm -hmm. 
just wait for the body to show you this place. And when you feel some kind of answer from your body, a kind of bodily resonance about that place being curious enough for something new, I want to encourage you to place a hand on your body outside so that you can feel this inside place a little bit more precise, connect with it directly. Just do so if you like that. Place a hand and where your body shows here is something opening and curious and uh, expectation for something new to try. Yes, and then with a fresh breathing, prepare yourself to open your eyes again when I really give a signal for doing so. And looking at the picture on the screen, with curious eyes, with a sense of empathic curiosity, even if you do not like the painter's style or the colors are strange to you, or, yeah, to stay curious with your eyes when you look at it and to just receive, to just allow yourself to resonate to what your eyes see. And I open up the picture now for you. And just look at it and get a sense of, ah, aha, uh -huh. that kind of picture. And that kind of colors. Just perceive. There may be Impressions, resonances of a kind of atmosphere that this picture holds implicitly. Just take it in without judging and empathic curiosity. Maybe you feel some bodily echoing inside in some kind of quality, bodily feelings. When something like that comes, allow it to, to notice it. And then with a fresh breath, when you feel ready to reach out and touch to really take this picture under your skin. I invite you to touch alongside the shape, the body, the body line of the person sitting in the foreground. And I just make this visible with this little computer sign, this little, or my mouse, yeah, computer mouse. So this part of the picture, I invite you to lay your index finger 
on the screen, touch directly and go along this line with your index finger as if you are repainting it. Just repetitive doing this. If you feel like, and if you are familiar with this line already, you may close your eyes and feel inside what this line, this moving the line, is feeling like from the body. And maybe your tempo of lining this line is faster than mine. You can change the tempo, becoming very slow, being really feeling the line. And maybe if you do so, They're also coming words from the inside. Or you notice a change in your breathing. Or you get pictures by yourself, you know, imaginary pictures. And maybe you hear some kind of inner sound, imagine. You can pause in between, listen inside, feeling inside. What is the overall bodily feeling to repainting this line, to realigning it bodily? Just take your time. Resonating bodily feeling. Maybe some words come along. Or inside images sounds and just hold that with friendly curiosity without judging and I ask you if you are ready to do so to make a few um, notes either in the chat or on a sheet of paper if this is too private for you to put it into the chat and what is written in the chat, we will read later at the end of this exercise. And your handwritten notes can be added too if you feel free to do so after the exercise. And I give one more minute to do this small write up of your inside echo. And I thank you for giving something into the chat from your personal experiencing. Thank you. Hmm. I just feel if you're ready to make a next new step. If there is an inside nodding saying, oh yeah, it can go on with this exercise, right? And I see some kind of noddings from some of you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Great. Ah, taking you breaths. Maybe you want to move a little bit. Your, maybe your body feels a need to move a little bit. And give space to that, please. Yeah. Before we make the next step. Yes. 
And then I invite you for the next step to go back to your body inside and see if there's still some inside connection with this place that feels open enough to be curious. Is this place still there? You can ask your body to help you and show this place again, inside place from where it is open enough to reach out into curiosity and exploring. Just take your time to find this starting point from the inside again. And when your body is giving you some information about the inside place being open enough and curious enough to explore, Again, you may want to place a hand on the outside body to feel this place of curiosity a little more directly, to connect to it more directly. And when you're ready, I invite you to look at the picture again, to come from inside again to the outside and look at the picture freshly and look what is what else is there beside this person in the foreground what else is there what else can your eyes see freshly Just receive, and I want to invite you as a suggestion to focus on this line in the background. Where the sea, the water meet the shore. And this is this line I'm showing with my technical sign here. That is a seashore, the ocean, meeting the beach, the stone, the stony beach, and going up to the horizon to the left, to the open left of the of the painting. And just follow this line with your eyes, curious, just for exploring. How is that line? And reaching out with your index finger again and make this line come under your skin. Touch the line and redraw it directly on the screen. And again, repeat. Feeling, sensing. We're painting this line in the background. What kind of sensual echo comes to you? What kind of bodily felt sense is emerging from that? And you don't have to be super precise or perfect. Just as good as you can see this line, right? maybe very small on your on your smartphone allow yourself to trust and let the finger the index finger move along again and again maybe with eyes closed just this move this curves and Feel if there's maybe even an inner sound coming up or a thought, a word, an association as image. What is happening inside when you redraw this line? Fat sense, word coming up maybe, image of your own, 
or sound. Just receive and hold it with a friendly interest without judging. And also this you can write down on your piece of paper when it's very private or put it into the chat, please, if you feel like. Maybe you have felt a difference between the first line and the second line you did. And if this comes to you as well, you can also make a short write up on that, please. And I invite you to just, you know, um, validate with yourself that you did this exercise, that you did try out something new, that you did experiment, and that you reached out also into the chat to just uh, thank yourself for doing it and uh, preparing yourself to come back to the space we all share, to come back as group and I will close my screen. Okay. Yeah. Hello back all together. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and I hope you are um, again here present in the outside world, right? You can have an eye check who is there all here in our common place, in our place we share. Yeah. And uh, my suggestion is um, to read what you put into the chat to both lines. Um, maybe have one or two comments and then go into the breakout room so you have a chance to reflect a little bit more on the differences you experience it with both lines and what that does to you and what kind of lining did bring you towards um, feeling better or towards feeling um, more well, towards feeling more at peace, towards feeling more alive, right? I now read the chat and... I scroll back, let me see. Okay. So what you wrote um, for the first line, the four side of the picture was pensive, gloomy, overcast, longing, Sorrow, sadness. It starts a spontaneous movement process form. Glum, tired, heavy, stone-like. Then comes a longer sentence saying, an urge came forth to touch my body in a full sweep to echo the line of the body in the painting, leading to a smile emerging from me. Another reflection on the first one, circling imprisoned. And now you can set uh, messages to the second one. Uh, one of you wrote, um, the second line has something of Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. The environment is accompanying this being. Listen. You hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin and cease, and then again begin with tremendous cadets slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. 
wonderful poem. And then comes escape, so good, known, freedom, light, free touch, like a ticker, two distinct parts, unlike first where the line felt more familiar. More and more free and flowing, dancing in a twirling motion down the shore. Wow, so rich. Yes, thank you all. You got that, you heard that, what you all wrote, did you? Yeah, you did. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so good to see your faces again. Wow. I'm curious what you discovered in your breakout rooms and how your personal impressions and experimenting uh, went further through uh, sharing and reflecting in your breakout rooms. So maybe one, two, three of you want to give this into our big group here. You're also welcome to do. Well, in our little group, it was amazing how all of us, or at least that's what I'm interpreting, oh, that's what I got and resonating with, we, we saw more, you know, by engaging the sense of touch and just uh -huh. being, um, and we saw whole or green or more in the landscape or, uh, and one of the things we do in expressive therapy I was um, sharing is that we talk to the image or we let part of the image talk to other parts in the image. And for me, the environment was really uh, holding this man. There was something in the shape that were very similar to his body shape. And, I, and then I felt like the man was not looking at the landscape I was seeing. And I would ask, you know, would you be curious to turn around? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of good idea for a client I'm going to see tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. So, so thankful. Uh, I'm so thankful, Sophie. Thank you. Yes. Does anyone else want to bring in what you found out in your breakout rooms, how it carried yourself further with this experiencing. Yes, Charles, you are lifting your hand and Shashi uh, also. Shashi also, and I think she's first. Go ahead, Shashi. Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to know how do you introduce this? Do you show many cards and let the person pick out a card? That's what you do because you don't pick out a card for the person. You show the cards. So I'm hoping that if they are having some like undefined feeling or emotion or what have you, having these venues to look at chooses them to pick something and then they can take off from it. Yes, I just make a short um, uh, reply. Yes, of course, it's um, they have their seams, they have a bodily fe felt sense to their seams. And from that bodily sense, they choose the cards. So all what is that seems about, implicit, explicit, all the multiple facets of that are in that uh, choosing from the first sense. It's all implicit, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Charles. <laughs> well, very briefly, I just like one of the comments of the previous persons about and we thought we commented too that he, he the, the man seems somehow disconnected from the, the the rather lovely environment that's actually there with the ocean is and he's just immersed in his experience of sadness mm -hmm. it seems and it's almost like the pain is inviting us to sense how disconnected he is from the beauty and that that's really part of what's possibly creating the sadness i just intellectually sort of that's sort of coming to me as as we have this discussion the other thing i want to say about that also 
about the pain. I, I used to work with children and sometimes we tried to find stories that would fit the child, but it was always much better to take the child to the library and have him pick or her pick out the story. They always went more, it was always more meaningful when they made the choice. Yeah, so it, yeah, it makes sense to have more than one picture and have, have, the, have the person pick the one that resonates for them, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Sean, so much. Yes. I think we have one more time for one more comment from the breakout rooms. <laughs> Who wants to take the chance? I like that avenue. Donna, you lifted up your hand, right? Yes. Can you unmute you, please, Donna, please? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I would just say, I appreciate very much what we're talking about, about the client choosing the image. Yeah. And the other side of it is we didn't do that. We had one image that we, that you chose. And I had, a, I had a quite profound experience with that. So there's something to be said for the other side of this, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is just what does come. Mm -hmm. At any level, it, it's interesting what what does come when you're presented with something, with something. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's just interesting to keep mm -hmm. both perspectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I just wanted to say I appreciated this very much, Frida. It brought a lot and. Um, that image is, is such a wonderful one for um, for evoking the felt sense. Um, and I, I was thinking about what you said, Frida, about the, the image being a container. And I thought about the difference between a container and a handle. And the container is something that sort of holds us. And the, the handle that that it is also sort of uh, expands us and brings the more. So uh, the image does both of those things. Yeah, thank you, Lynn, so much for putting our focus on those both um, good functions that images can have. I really appreciate that, yeah. Um, yes, and I want to refer to Donna as well, you are right. Yeah, I chose the picture for technical reasons here, uh, because otherwise um, I cannot spread all the pictures on the screen same time. And therefore I try to install in your inside body a place that is curious enough to open to something new, which you may not like, yeah, but uh, curious enough. So there's a little bit of, 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 of will there are, or, 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 you know, to be curious. Um, therefore, I installed this very consciously in this exercise, right? Because you did not have the opportunity to have all those. But, or and, um, there are two other pictures in the handout. Uh, and I want to encourage you to make your own experiments with that. There's lots more in the handout and um, maybe do it together with colleagues. And I wish you all to be curious enough to uh, integrate arts into your sessions with your clients in the way that fits best to you. And with these words I give to Dorothy, who is making the final ritual today that is a poem <laughs> having to do with our topic. Thank you all for bringing your impressions in from the breakout rooms. It was lovely to hear all that. And Doriso, it's your turn now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frida. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, just to pay attention that Frida did make a few little changes, so, just so it really fits in with our focusing theme. And I didn't put it in the chat today because I know you're all familiar. It's the poem, um, the song, Hey Jude, the words to it. Um, hey Jude, don't make it bad. 
Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let it under your skin. Then you begin to make it better. So let it out and let it in. Hey Jude, begin. You're waiting for something to perform with. And don't you know that it's just you? Hey Jude, you'll do. The movement you need is on your shoulder. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let it under your skin. Then you begin to make it better. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I wonderful. never paid attention to those words before. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.